Maybe some of you want to create panoramas like I did in my documentary series about Berlin subway stations. That shouldn't be so difficult, right? Yes, it is. In my project, problems repeatedly popped up, which I then solved, only to be confronted directly with a new problem. Nevertheless, maybe one or the other of my solutions is interesting if you ever want to make VR panoramas, especially stereoscopic ones. My solutions are often, no, mostly unconventional, but they work, and my project started with Normal VR cameras have two lenses, each of them capturing 180 degrees. You can create panoramas with them, but they don't have a 3D effect, because each eye sees the same image. Stereoscopic VR cameras have much more lenses, and so they are able to create two slightly different panoramas for each eye. But they are also quite expensive. My solution? The principle can also be used with a normal VR camera. You need a tripod head for panoramas. Also a small rail that you can slide back and forth in the tripod head. To create a 3D effect in a photo, you have to take two pictures. The camera has about the distance of the two human eyes between the two shots. They are on one axis. But for a panorama, this axis rotates. So you need more than two shots. You take a picture for the left eye, then you move the rail to the right and take the picture for the right eye. Now you turn the panorama head by 60 degrees and take two pictures again. The process is repeated six times for a total of 12 images, or six images for each eye. Later you have to combine the six pictures for each eye to a panorama. Only the images from the front lens are used because the images don't have the same center point like normal panoramas do, you have a lot more stitching errors. These have to be corrected manually. I contacted the BVG. Fortunately, they were very friendly and I got a permission without having to pay anything. However, there were two conditions. First, I had to list exactly when and where I was taking pictures. The second condition was less easy to solve and led to a new problem. Everyone who has ever taken panorama shots knows it is actually impossible to take 360 degrees panoramas without a tripod. But because I wasn't allowed to use a tripod, I had to find a solution. I attached my panorama tripod head to a handle. I now stabilize the camera on my body. This time, one lens is responsible for the left eye, the other for the right eye, so that the rail does not also have to be moved. Because I am now standing myself in the view, I now shot in four directions. Without a tripod, stitching errors occurs even more, of course. To keep them as small as possible, I don't hold the camera at head level, because there you naturally move more. That's why the perspective of the panoramas is a bit unusually close to the ground. Just as if you were sitting on a chair. But the solution leads to the next problem. For each eye there are about 12 pictures available. That is twice as many as with the tripod. But this is necessary because you can select from the 12 pictures those that produce a minimum of stitching errors. These are still many and very strong, and the only way to correct them is to correct them manually. That takes time. Very much time. And that's more or less where the first phase of my project ended. The second phase started with a new problem. Almost all stations have been changed more or less over time. So I had to rework the finished panoramas and restore the stations virtually. This was an incredible time-consuming, slow and hard work, but I think it was still worth it. The virtual restoration of the stations of the 70s and 80s was in a way the solution for this problem. But in doing so, further problems occurred, and the first one was 
To know what the station once looked like in detail, you need color photos. You don't find enough online. I ordered all kind of books about the Berlin subway from libraries and collected color photos of the stations and made notes. I did not find all details with it. There is also an archive of the BVG, which also contains photos. But when I got into this phase of the project, research was difficult because of the corona pandemic. The incidence in Berlin at that time was quite high and I would have had to travel through half the city by subway to get there. This created another problem. In contrast to the actual subway stations, there are almost no photos of the entrance levels in books. Because I didn't want to go to the BVG archive, if I would have actually found photos of entrance levels there is not sure, I had to combine information. An example. In the entrance level of the station Siemensdamm, there are floor tiles. Are they original? The argument against it is that the stations of the 70s mostly had concrete floors, and the station itself had one of those as well. Nevertheless, I believe that the tiles are original. First, the tiles don't look like they were installed later, because then it probably would have been modern standard material, usually light-colored granite tiles. And secondly, the same kind of tiles were installed in the station Paulsternstraße, which was opened only four years later. At least with the actual stations, the photos from the books helped. Some elements that were removed at one station still exist elsewhere. For example, aluminum panels that are still there at the station Punkstraße. I transferred these aluminum panels to other panoramas from photos I took there. Of course, that means again, I had to insert such elements manually and that takes time. Other elements don't exist at all today, for example platform displays or benches. I had to create those out of nothing. A special case is the station Siemensdamm. Because the elements on the wall behind the tracks are partly missing today, I inserted two photos from books into my panorama. Then I used them to form the wall elements out of my original panorama and removed the two photos afterwards. What you see in the finished panorama on this wall are therefore not the photos from the books, but very detailed reproductions. And now enough of problems and new problems. I think it is clear that there was more work in this project than you might think at first glance. And that was only a small part of it. Of course, there was also other time-consuming work, like the subway plans or the sound recordings of the stations. But I am quite happy with the result, so I don't regret all the work at all. Next time there will be a time travel in the actual sense again. See you then and thanks for watching.